After 25 years in the fashion industry, I've realized that fashion is not really about the clothes, it's about the people. I'm Laura Van Root Poole, and this is What We Wore. Lynn Harris is a British nose who's the force behind Perfumer H. This episode is a fascinating look into the world of perfumery and what it takes to be an independent perfumer. It's hard to express how dynamic and beautiful her work is. You'll just have to listen and then smell. Lynn, I am so excited to talk to you. Are you in your laboratory in London? Um, right at this moment, I'm in my office, actually, in, um, in my secluded little office, yes. <laughs> Lynn, where are you from? So I'm from the countryside in Yorkshire. Okay. Um, it's a small town called Halifax. Were your grandparents well, there too? So, yeah. So my grandparents were in Sco- Scotland. So my mother is Scottish and she met my father in Yorkshire. It was quite lovely because in the school holidays, me and my sister used to get um, shipped off to Scotland <laughs> um, to see my grandparents. And they were in the Highlands and they had a small holding. So it was it was quite a unique setting and quite idyllic um, for two small girls. Yeah. And what yeah. was it like just filled with heather and my grandmother had this, ama- they had two amazing gardens, these, these great walled gardens. So one was full of her favorite flowers. She had a thing about geraniums. So she had Me lots too. of different. They were mainly inside actually, but outside she, she had lots of wildflowers, you know, huh. she had lots of really tall stock. I always remember and heather's Oh, she, she and she had roses. She had peonies. Yeah, she was she was very eclectic, and she had lots of wild grasses as well. I remember. So yeah, we were kind of like cut off from the rest of the world. It was beautiful, and we used to spend like six weeks of the summer there. Do you remember at the time being influenced by the garden and the flowers? And yeah, I was I was a daydreamer. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I yeah, and, and I loved to play in in the gardens. I was always outside. I loved I loved the air up there. And I was always falling over. I remember I was I was a bit naughty at the same time, and I remember it so vividly. It was incredible. It's incredible. It's like I can quite honestly say there's not a day goes by I don't think of that place. It's it was so special to me. What did you know about perfume or or scent at the time, and and that that could even be a career? I didn't know anything, but I do remember the smells in my grandmother's house. So. So when we woke up in the morning, because it was a cottage, we were all together. Mm-hmm. You know, the rooms were really close. And I remember waking up to the smell of her baking mm-hmm. the bread. Um, I, I, and I can, I can smell the fire that my grandfather was, was you know, he was stoking up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I can, and then she'd be making other things. And whichever day it was, because she had a sequence of days for each thing. So <laughs> I, I, think, I think Monday was her baking day. For like all, all our lovely treats, you know, like scones <laughs> and and the um, yeah, she had a bread day, and then she had a, and then if it was um, a sort of jam season, she would she would make the jams, and then in the summer, I mean, because because it was at the end of the summer, we'd always had these like teasans with the, with the black currant. Mm. Oh my god, and we'd have that <laughs> in the evening, and she'd have made it was like it was you know there's a, um oh it was like the the, the it was the excess from the jam making she used to put into this tea and oh my god oh wow and it was so pure and good for you but we used to have it hot (laughs) by the fire it just all played a part in my in my development my olfactory development most definitely I was just so, so blown away by it all and just just yeah and I also remember my grandmother's perfume I was gonna ask that yeah she had a, her style because she made all her own clothes. I mean, everything from her coats and she had beautiful jewellery and she was quite a prominent figure, but she always had these this whisper of something. Um, it was either a whisper of lavender. What else did you, and we were talking about it the other day with my mum, a whisper of lavender. I always remember this lavender smell. So it was always clean, the smell. There wasn't an artificial smell. And I think that's what's made me so obsessed with, with, the integrity of my materials because they were as well and that's why they grew everything. When you went to university what did you study? Well I didn't go to university because so basically I didn't do very well at school because yeah nothing seemed to no teacher seemed to sort of connect with me sadly 
um, my parents, you know, were, were, were quite happy for me to leave because actually school just said, I think it's best if Lynn doesn't carry on um, for X, Y, Z reason. I think I was a bit naughty. And <laughs> but I did have a job. I had this Saturday job in a fragrance shop and it huh. was the only place for miles that you could get your fine fragrance. And it was all the French brands like Carpege, um, it, and it was the start of the American sort of brands like, you know, there's Elizabeth Arden and, um, and Clinique and, uh, huh. and gosh, I loved it. And I, but the, the fine and Guerlain, there was, they had every single Guerlain and I loved it. So I worked with them during this period where I was deciding what I was going to, to do. And then I came home one day because my sister was at university and I came home one day and I said, do you know what, mum, I want to learn how to make fragrance. And mum said, OK, we'll look at some courses and let's let's see where, you know, what happens. And because my parents had a place in France, I didn't think, oh, I can't go to France. I don't speak French. I, I just thought, do you know what, mum, there's this one in Paris. What do you think? And I got interviewed and they accepted me. So that's where I went. Really? Yeah. And Lynn, what did your dad do? Like, did he own his own business or? He, he was, he, so he was a big entrepreneur and had right. a very successful architectural business. He, he was an architect huh. and was quite a character, um, <laughs> sort of renowned in the area. And yes, I watched, I, I mean, I have very beautiful memories of him, but he, he, built his business you know from nothing and I think that enabled me to do what I'm doing today I just thought gosh you know anything's possible you would have to have had some example of just jumping off to to doing something that you'd never considered yeah. before you know yeah yeah no totally yeah we all need that don't we <laughs> yeah we need like a model or something I think yeah you essentially from just from high school went straight into studying to be a nose so school in Paris was quite interesting so I had I was two and a half years with her. I did six months with her in her lab but I I was so I found this small school that this female perfumer had set up and she was quite a pioneer because in the it was in the nineties, and in the nineties, not a lot of um, women were um, choosing perfumery as their career. It was ma it was male orientated. Why do um, you think that is, Lynn? Just because you know my generation was the first gen one of the first generations coming through to work, you mm -hmm. know, and yeah. you know to have a career. Mm -hmm. You know, Monique was quite unique. She, I mean, she was um, when she taught me, she was she was a lot older, and she sort of stood out um, as one of the first sort of you know, recognize female noses. She did a lot of work with Anique Goutal in the early days. Oh, wow. And she, and she worked for L'Artisan and Guerlain, and, and she was a brilliant perfumer. And the school she set up is still going today because she's no, she's, she's, she passed away five years ago. But it's, it's, it's a legacy to her and her talent. Hmm. Um, but the school was really interesting. Um, I was her first um, British Student. And I think, you know, she took me under her wing because she could see that I was, you know, I didn't, because basically there was a lot of marketing people as well. So you could go into evaluation um, and there was very few that went into being a perfumer. In my year, there was just me and this, uh, this other girl. Hmm. Um, for example, my best friend, um, she was from um, Bologna. She, she, she wanted to be a perfumer. And then one day, sort of in the second year, she, she turned around and said, I just, I just can't do it. it I'm, and, and she's actually one of the best evaluators now. Because it was too intense. Yeah. So she just couldn't write the formulas. We were together one day and she said, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm just writing a formula. I've got this idea. Um, and she said, wow, you can just do it from smelling. And I, and I <laughs> said, yeah. But I knew I had something within me. I've been playing around with materials. I sort of set up my own laboratory at home. Um, with all these materials from grass. I was working day and night at, at, at just trying to, to get simpler chords. Mm. Um, whereas my best friend, she was just, she, she, she loved the idea of being a perfumer, but it just, it just wasn't happening for her. So it didn't happen to everybody. I was very driven and I, I knew I had something within me to create. Will you tell me a little bit about what what those courses entailed? Like what is the coursework? How many years um, does it take? Yeah, so you go through all the different families let's to start with so basically you learn how to smell mm. let's say on day one 
So that's quite a process in itself. Were you straight well, A's from the beginning? Not to this degree. <laughs> right. Not to this degree. So you, to be taught, it sounds very simple. Oh, gosh, I can smell. But actually, you can't. No. You need to learn how to smell mm. to this level that, that they require you to smell. You know, because to be able to detect all these different facets from green balsamic to you know, oceanic, you know, all yeah. these little facets are, are quite detailed. And and within a formula, it's very, you know, to be able to detect them is is, is an, another level. And I remember green, she keeps saying, can you smell the green notes? I remember, I can't smell the green notes. And then all of a sudden, bing, you can smell the green notes with the citrus and the, everything comes alive. For the first year, I had headache after headache after huh. headache. You know, I had to really work through the pain of, of just being able to, to, to retain all this olfactory knowledge yeah, and then translate it in my brain and then retain that information to be able to then go into a store and smell a perfume and say, hey, that's leather, this, but this has a smoky and this has a wood facet. You know, so mm. it took a good... 12 months before I started to see these different elements and then you then you start smelling raw materials but you're, you're only you know you only smell about a, a hundred raw materials in total in your, your whole sort of um course um it's not until you go to a fragrance house and do a, a rigorous sort of training and from and from master I mean that's what I did basically you start really putting everything together and putting your style and being able to 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 write quite intense you know formulas and express your olfactory sort of ideas a bit more detailed at school you're just learning the basics you know you you, you learn how to smell you learn the different fragrance families there are five fragrance families and you go into detail for each of those families and then you learn the different facets and then you learn how to, to evaluate. And then at the end, we did simple composition work, which was using bases um, and, some, and some raw materials. You do an analysis of a fine fragrance, let, let's say, you know, arpege. And then you, you basically try and do all the accords that make it that smell. Um, and we did that, you know, for a good six months. And then I had six months after my course and where I worked with Monique in her laboratory, which was incredible. Did you ever um, worry that you didn't have it? That, I mean, did you ever have a day where you thought, maybe I maybe I can't do this? No, never, <laughs> never, never. It was just oozing yeah, out of me. I and love Monique it. knew that as well, and she was very proud of me. Oh. Yeah. What was the yeah. most important advice that Monique gave you? She was worried that I wouldn't have a life <laughs> outside perfumery. She was really worried that I wouldn't you know, ever get married or I wouldn't. Yeah, she was always saying, but please, Lynn, you know, go out and enjoy yourself. <laughs> she, she thought I was too obsessed. <laughs> but but no, in a positive way. Yeah. Um, but then when I went to Grass, my master that um, that I worked under, his biggest, you know, he his advice to me was learn to be patient. That was the best advice I ever had. Will you talk to me about Grass a little bit and explain to the listeners kind of what it is yeah. and why it is? Yeah, grass is this magical place. And I can remember to this day going down the path to the to the fragrance house. And I can remember somebody toot, uh, this lorry tooting at the back of me. Um, <laughs> and it gave me such a, a jump. And um, and he was he was just like, get out of my way, sort of thing. And um, in another language, obviously. And I sort of followed him down and he was offloading all the, the oak moss from oh, the wow. truck overnight and he was really tired you know it was, it was in the morning and all this wonderful oak moss and I was like wow oh and then God. and that, and that was me the magic you know I just thought this is an incredible place <laughs> and that's where extraction took place now extraction is 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 done all over the world but still a lot of it they do in um in grass and they have this big um they've got a new site where they do um some incredible things I fell in love with Robert. I got introduced to them through contact who liked my work and said, you should meet Robert A. Um, Robert A. Grass. Yes, the, my fragrance house. And I got introduced to the family and I went for an interview and they they liked me and they liked my work. 
And then they put me under a master, Richard Melchio. Mm. And he was just this incredible man that gave me three years of his undivided attention. And just the two of you? Uh, yes, it was a very precious time. And it was a really interesting time as well. There wasn't, grass was very calm. It was very quiet. I think the fragrance industry has got more intense now. I don't think you could ever have that time with a right. perfumer now. Yeah. There's so much money to be made and there's so little time. But <laughs> there was time when I was there, you know what I mean? We, You know, I could spend the whole afternoon with with Richard in, in, in smelling and, and we'd often go to places you know off the Côte d'Azur like we would go we'd we'd walk down route to Napoleon and and you know we'd drive to a special spot and then go for a walk and then have a picnic and talk about <laughs> what we could smell and it was incredible and I mean he he was a second generation grassoir perfumer so it was you know it was incredible to listen to him and his knowledge of naturals and the fields that surrounded grass when he was growing up. And that is why grass yeah. is what it is, right? Is because it's yeah. it's like the perfect growing zone for roses, lavender. Yeah. But what was really sad, basically, when I was there, all the fields were being sold off for real oh my estate, God. and and it was so tragic. And mm. so there was a bit of it was a little bit sort of, a, and basically, all the fragrance houses were focusing on Paris and New York, and that and so grass was this sort of forgotten capital of fragrance you know what I mean it was just really sort of quite shabby Mm. and then in the last sort of 15 years it's really come alive Mm. at the museum there's various families and Robert A's one the Fragonard um, uh, sisters are are another that that have really put a lot of they've just put a lot of energy and time and love back into it and it's this incredible place um that everybody should go and visit if you if you love fragrance love my fragrance house is very special to me and I've been I've been with them over 25 years now wow is there a governing body for the perfume industry like an accreditation to to become a nose well no so basically it's after college this is the time so so you, you you graduate from your school and basically, then your interview with your fragrance house is your is is your biggest challenge because they don't basically take anybody on. And so, if they don't like your work or you or you're just not giving them anything, they they you know it's it's a very frustrating profession because there's only a few places. Huh. And really, I remember when I was at Robert A. A lot of people said, "But so you're not from a family of you know the, <laughs> you know in the south of France, or you're not." I said, no, no, nobody in my family is is from the fragrance industry. <laughs> I'm I'm from, you know, so but actually I think because I was British, because I was quirky and quite tomboyish, I think that's why they kind of said, Do you know what? She's different. Let's let's let her in. Mm. And and all the the masters, you know, because they all had their office and they all smoked <laughs> and told me all the stories. You know what I mean? And then I used to go on these lunches with them where they used to get, you know, have a glass of wine or two and tell me all these magical stories of of what went on. And I was just a sponge and I took it all in and and yeah, and it was just the most wonderful time. And so when you went to Robert A from university, did you, so do you bring like a portfolio as you would as yes, a designer yes, or yeah, an artist? Yeah. So wow. you in, you have, you have an interview, you show your work. And, and also I said, I only wanted to, to, to work in the alcoholic perfumery department and um, candles. And what does that mean? Uh, so there's other departments. So you can go um, into household you know detergents you know there's lots there's <laughs> lots of different departments and and if you're doing the whole you know you know you're going in from the big, from the start uh, from the bottom you you have to go through each department but i just said i just want to the, these are my areas the three areas i want to do and that, and that was it and so and also i said and i i i want to come and go cuz yeah so i i lived half the time there and half the time um, in London, and that's how it kind of worked. So it was my second home, um, and I went backwards and forwards for three years. I learnt their amazing portfolio of materials, you know, thousands and thousands. I mean, Robert A. have the, are renowned for the, for naturals. They have fields all over the, the world. 
Um, they have the best extraction, you know, they have really amazing extraction methods now, um, which today are, just blow you away, you know, um, what they've learned and how they've progressed. Your training with Monique was mostly about learning how to identify the hundred. Yes. And then your work with Robert A was more about your creativity or intuition and trying yeah. to blend. Yeah, developing my style as a perfumer, developing yeah. who I am as, uh, how, how, how do I become a perfumer it's really developing what's what I f- feel is me and 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 that's what my master brought out he taught me the complete library of materials he we went through them meticulously every day I, I wow. learned them by heart you know through my, my olfactory you know and um and then and then it was about progressing my my sort of my formula work and my you know my creativity. You know how I could make a beautiful smell and 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 on the skin. You know and just mm. really perfecting my style and my work. And that was quite interesting. Also, I was so I had this special arrangement which I had today, where because I don't work day to day in their fragrance house, I come and go. Um, I'm an indep- I'm one of their independent perfumers, and that, there's only two of us um, that exist at Robert A. But I work remotely and I have their code book and everything and wow. I get all the new materials sent to me and everything. But yes, I, I work remotely and I have my own clients and that's that's and that's our, how it's worked so well. Do you have any of the the original scents that you did with Monique that were in your portfolio? Do you have yes, you kept I those? Do. And do you still love them? I mean, are they? Or have you changed? I mean, do you get more oh, sophisticated? I, yeah. Do you get more simple? Yeah. Like, how does how does that work across to, across a lifetime? Oh, I think <laughs> yeah, I think you get you get more simple. You definitely <laughs> do. I think with age, you just want to sort of rid your, You know, you don't have anything to prove anymore. So mm-hmm. I don't. I don't, you know, fascinate about this material that's driving me mad and think, oh, how can I bring, you know, I don't complicate things anymore. I I just have a (laughs) a confidence, you know, just using the palette that I prefer, that I want to use, because this is what makes my work sing. Do you know what I mean? It's not about, I I have nothing to prove anymore, really. (laughs) I feel, yes, I I have things to prove to myself, but... I, I'm quite comfortable in my space. You know, I want to make people smell beautiful, but I want to use amazing materials and 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 I have my signature style and 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 I have an audience who appreciate that and that I think, you know, and and then and that really sort of, you know, means means a lot to me and that's that's what I'm about. I don't want to follow. Yeah, I have a philosophy and and and. I think there's there's a lot of fragrances out there, so I don't need to join in the noise of that. I just want to make fragrances that that whisper and make your your heart feel full of joy. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Because you do it. <laughs> uh, will you talk to me about the middle of your career and talk about Miller Harris? Miller Harris, I did quite early on. Actually, it was one of the first sort of milestones. But I, I was working for an American brand. And I still did that while I started Miller Harris, you know, and it was just me and Christoph and we left, you know, and so, so the first 10 years were you know, incredible, but I think, I think we were a bit sort of shocked by how, how people lo- liked the brand. Yeah. Um, you know, we had this small shop in Notting Hill and then it, and it all sort of took off and, and then we had Barney's. Christoph is your husband and um, he yeah. ran the business with you. Does he have any yeah. background in perfume or what was his background? So he's from, well, I met him in grass. Oh, um, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yes, Aww. I did. I met him in grass. Yeah. So <laughs> I was the talk of the town. Yeah. 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 But yes, because he was working in this hotel and he was just stopping through. He'd had a very stressful life. He was working all the hours. He hated, you know, sort of marketing. And um, so then, um, he left and then came back and I and he'd hurt his leg and so he was only staying for a month and then he met me um yeah and that, and that was it yeah, yeah he <laughs> stayed he came to London and never looked back have you created Miller Harris just the two of you the, yeah the two of us created it yes yeah I mean did he one of the things that I remember most about um it's funny when you ask people if they know Miller Harris when they see the branding the art the 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 graphic design was so yeah. beautiful. And I think that was as, as important. I, I mean, the fragrances were amazing, but the, the graphic design was so good. 
Yeah, I know. I know. I, I just want to, I love this botanical print. I know. <laughs> um, I was, yes, I was obsessed with it. And um, and then I loved bright, you know, the bright colours. Mm. Yeah, it was very eclectic as well. Yeah, it was very, it was very interesting. I, I really enjoyed that brand. So I left after 15 years. I and- sold it to private equity, actually. And um, and I stayed for a year and then they allowed me to start my 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 new brand. And that that so that was 10 years ago, yeah, over 10 years ago. And yeah. what did you learn from that experience? Because I, I mean, like when I you st- a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. you did. <laughs> what, what was the most important thing you learned? Oh, gosh, <laughs> I learned to go with your instinct and never be never. N- yes, don't ever think your instinct's not right because it always is mm. as a brand owner and and yes don't be swayed by by others yeah um but do listen to your team mm. always listen to your team and and your team is everything to you I did miss my team because in my final year at Milhouse the team began to change mm. and that's when you know that the brand isn't you know yours anymore because people make your brand yeah. It's not it's not just about you. It's about the people and how they express your vision mm-hmm. with you and, and help you evolve. They're everything. Um, and that's that's what I found wonderful about Perfumer Age. And that, I think that's why I've started. You know, I, I said at the beginning, I have to work with like minded artists as well. Mm. And that's just been a wonderful, a wonderful um, journey. Why did you get to the point where you were ready to sell Miller Harris? Because. I had something else that I wanted to get out and it was, I was, it was, uh, and I just felt it had changed. Mm. It didn't need me anymore. Yeah. It had grown up. Um, yeah. And and that was, that's, it's, it's yeah, I, it was a big thing to sort of recognize, but I knew it was time. Mm-hmm. And when I knew it was time, you know, you, you do feel quite emotional, but at the same time, you, you do, it's, you know, you know, you have to wave goodbye and, and, there's something else waiting for you and you just have to believe that um and not fear that and I, th- I think a lot of people are like no you can't I was like yeah no I have to I have to I remember Crystal saying are you sure and I said yep yeah, I'm sure how did you say this is how I'm going to do it differently this time I think yeah I think it's me grown up I mm. think it's me more confident more sort of knowing who I am and also you know learning oh you know to say no to things as well oh I don't I don't have to do that because everybody does that. Do you know what I mean? This is how we do it. Just being really confident about w- how you see things I don't, and not following because that, that's what happens. And that's what, you know, I found in the last year we were just following a pattern of, okay, we've got to launch something else. We've got right. to do this. <laughs> so sort of going with your own sort of wind, your own, you know what I mean? Your own feeling and belief and instinct is just wonderful. I read a quote that you said, naturals are the soul of perfumery and the chemicals are the magic and the two go hand in hand always. The science of perfumery is is just mind boggling. It's wonderful. And without it, the, without it, a perfume is lifeless, mm. I have to say, really. And I'm, I love naturals. And don't get me wrong, I've got, you know, I do have an orange flower fragrance, which I wear a lot, which is completely natural and I love it. Mm. Naturals are really complex and they're really difficult to use Hmm. and and I've made it my thing that I know them inside out they are you know I've made them my friends and I love hate that I have a love-hate relationship (laughs) with them but they are difficult to use in perfumery and there's lots of legislation with it will you give me some examples of what naturals are you you know the 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 woods the cedar wood frankincense you know frankincense yeah uh, right okay you know all these wonderful you know lemon from sicily you know all these wonderful things i've got in this formula i'm looking at at the moment you have all these amazing constituents that make up a natural you know and and it's using these individually that make fragrance come alive like rose so rose has so many different constituents and then the, these in these constituents in their own right are so beautiful I, I when I show them to people they're like oh my god this so you know you have the rose alcohols for example so you you know and if you smell them individually they are so poetic and so soft and gentle it's, it's how I reuse them in diff, you know and we put you know 
in different ratios, you know, in a formula. And I can make my rose smell better than the rose itself. That's perfumery. Making a smell that smells of leather and you have no leather in it. How do you do that? I mean, that's my thing. I just, I love to do that. And that's, you know, my obsession. Um, You know, I've got this obsession with very simple things in life. You know, smoke, for example, is often a a thing people associate my work with. And, and, um, you know, there's so many different ways of expressing it. But chemicals aren't what you think they are. They're not negative. They're positive. Because they build the fragrance and allow it to stay or, I mean. They allow the naturals to, to come out. Mm. They, they, you know, they're, they're binding, they're, you know, they're, they're you know, they, they bring, you know, and uh, they just bring a magic. They bring a sparkle um, to, to a fragrance. Um, and, and it's learning, you know, which ones give your formula the structure you need do you know what I mean and and you know and you know whether it's the way you you put it you know it's in your florals or your wood you know what I mean there's there's you have these different ways of working your woods or your ambers by adding the naturals you really begin to sort of allow things to start yeah expressing your 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 landscapes you know your your Mm -hmm your feelings, your, your emotions. But, but yes, it, there's a structure to it all and, and the chemicals the, and the synthetics. You know, synthetics un, don't exist in nature. And, all, for example, all your musks are synthetics. And these are uh, wonderful. Huh. And today, with the, you know, today we just get, it just gets better and better. But still, I refer to some of the old synthetics. But, you know, it's, it's very interesting what's coming through as well, some incredible... It's a really interesting time in perfumery. It's 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 a, a you know there's a, a lot of braveness happening out there, but at the same time, I think we we've kind of gone back to simplicity as well, um, and just trying to protect the honesty of the industry. I think that's very important. Will you talk a little bit about perfume and just the history of perfume in general and scent? I mean, people have been scenting themselves for thousands of years right oh. well the egyptians first came they they, they founded perfumery really and mm. um, they they were so ahead of their time the egyptians and then it was the french that made it all really you know wearable mm. they they took away their oils because you can't put oils on clothing it's going to dirty your clothing of course the french cleaned it all up and made it <laughs> you know you could apply to your silk dress do you know what i mean mm. um and you know it was alcoholic perfumery was born <laughs> chanel 5 you know all those those fragrances from sort of you know the wartime you know are incredible you know the sort of early 1900s you know 1890 if you think of Jiki, yeah, Jiki. You know, Galan. Galan is a really interesting fragrance house for its history. And oh, that, you know, that there's different sort of benchmark fragrances for each era. I always look at it and just 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 find it fascinating, Galan. It's just a beautiful brand. It's mm. just a wealth. And, st- and of, still yeah. beautiful and hasn't sort of gone out of yeah. Do you wear the same fragrance always? Well, I don't wear fragrance because I'm oh. always because it distracts my nose. That's so I, fascinating. I, yeah. Did you get COVID? I mean, do you ever worry about losing your your nose? I, I was I was a bit I wasn't I wasn't I was a little bit nervous yeah. with COVID. Yeah. But but no, I did get COVID and I was fine. And I remember actually my um Christoph came from my fragrance house, one of the the, the owners of Robert A, and he bought me lots of beautiful new materials. And I couldn't meet him, but he left me this box of beautiful materials. And I can remember Caroline sent dropping them round for me, and I was like, "I can smell them, Caroline." I mean, be, and I was just so relieved. <laughs> but do you have a favorite? But, yes. Well, I, I've, be, I'm, I've got this fragrance I made for myself with with orange flower. I'm a bit obsessed with orange flower <laughs> at the moment. Um, but then sometimes I just yearn for a real sort of wonderful. I quite like transparent type of wood fragrances. That those are on my days off. If I go away. <laughs> You are a nose, correct? I mean, do you, and, and is yeah. there a governing body that called that christened you a nose? I think when you you, I think with time you reach that. I think your fragrance house determines. Oh, that. really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whichever yeah. fragrance 
right. house you 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 come from. I think that's your governing body. Without a fragrance house, you are nothing. You're not. Yeah. And, and it, that, that is unfair because there's a lot of amazing people out there creating smells who who are independent. Actually, right, sure. Um, and and that's you know I think that's commendable. I really admire that, and I really love that. But the fact it's happening, you know, and that's a kind of different way of looking at perfumery and 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 it should you know and it's like cooks who don't have the formal training I think right. it's great are there more women doing it than there were when you started oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> every time I go now I'm like oh it's a joy <laughs> just one wonderful yeah just lots and lots of girls now it's wonderful I don't think you had a prom but in Yorkshire, but yeah. <laughs> that is the question we ask everybody is what they wore to the prom. So I'm wondering, what did you wear to your wedding to Kristoff? And was it in grass or was it in Scotland? <laughs> or, what? or what was your favorite dress that your grandmother made you? Yeah, no, my grandmother. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm, I'm still waiting to wear that dress for Kristoff. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> that, so, so he can listen to this. Okay. <laughs> um, isn't that funny? Um, so, oh gosh, what? I guess Martin Margiela, I have this special mm. Martin Margiela piece that I do love to put on <laughs> for a special occasion. And what does it look like? Um, it's, it's, it's the Eve Klein blue. It mm. was that period. It was sort of one of his last collections. And it's a beautiful, you know, one of his silk fabrics. And, um, and the buttons are just so beautifully um, so, sewn in the same silk. Mm. And they come up the front. Um, and it's sleeveless and long. Yes. And I have a pair of his amazing boots that I always wear with them. <laughs> but, the, the, but yes. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, so that, yeah. I could see you in that beautiful blue. I think that'd be beautiful. Well, thank yeah. you so much. I, I love spending time with you. I love, and I, oh. and I can't wait to see you um, in the next couple yeah. of months. I'll come say, Hey, what we wore is produced by Capital and Balto creative media. The original song, Someone So Enchanting, was composed and performed by Britt Drazda. QueenCityPodcastNetwork.com. dot com.